Growing up, I heard this phrase a lot. Jesus wants more for you. God wants more for you. I would go to conferences or youth retreats or things like that. And the the speaker or pastor would look right into the audience and say, you're settling for so much less. God wants more for you. And while some of them had a, a good message behind what they were trying to say, I took that idea through my teen years and young adulthood. God wants more for me. God wants more for me. I would go on social media and hear people say, you know what, dream that dream. Dream your dream that God has given you and he's going he's gonna to make it happen for you. He has something big planned for, for you. You're going to do something big for God. You're settling for so much less, settling to be in despair, settling to be sad, settling to be in lack, settling to not have security, settling to not have love. You need to reach above that and and know that God wants more for you. He wants more connection, more security, more influence, more uh, success for you, maybe even more money, maybe more stuff if you follow his ways, if you get his blessings. I watched a video the other day on Instagram that said, living in lack is satanic. Living in lack is satanic. God promised us a life of abundance. I give you life that you may have it abundantly. So living in lack with less is not God's way. In fact, it's satanic. Jesus wants more for you. I internalize some of that. Okay, God wants more for me than I'm going to reach above and beyond where I'm at now. I'm not going to settle for just mediocrity. I'm going to reach for success. I'm going to reach for more with what's next. I'm trying to be ahead here. I'm trying to be do something great, something big for God, and I'm not going to let laziness or anything hold me back. So I'm going to push. I'm not going to look back, and I'm going to reach for that more that God has for me. The truth was, I was thinking about this, in some ways, very, very wrong. Let me bring one scripture to you that changed my perspective on this. It really just formed the way I think about this. It's in Philippians 3, verse 7. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Here's one of the big lessons I have for you today. What if the pursuit of more, more connection, more influence, more success, more productivity, more growth, more friends, more whatever, is our attempt to replace God? My stuff brings me peace. The people in my life bring me love. Uh, My money brings me security. Um, My house, my home, my cars bring me comfort. My church gives me a sense of significance. You see how this pursuit of more, all these different aspects of my life, I'm pursuing more and more and more to gain, to get more, to fill myself. Meanwhile, what have I forgotten? God. So what happens? Well, we see that there's emptiness in what the world has to offer. Some people will realize this and say, something's wrong here. But others will say, I guess I just don't have enough. So you continue on this path, dissatisfied, discontent, and you think in some ways that this is what God wants for you. Because I guess I haven't reached that pinnacle. I haven't reached that pinnacle of success of more. I haven't accomplished that dream that God's want, God wants for me. That's why I'm discontent. That's why I need to keep striving. I need to keep pushing. But maybe that's the wrong way to think about it. Maybe that's the wrong way to look at this. Maybe we've been missing the point all along. I want to tell you a story of a young man. Now, this young man was wealthy. He was extremely wealthy. Compared to other people his age in his same uh, region, they were, you know, he was extremely rich and he was successful. He had power. Other people would look at him and say, wow, he is the ideal young man. He has wealth. He has power. He has status. Man, surely, like he is doing something right. But this young man encounters Jesus. And he says, Jesus, you know, I have honored my parents my whole life. I have done what is right. I have adhered to the commandments. I've done all these things. What more do I need to do? Like I'm, I'm perfect, right? I, I'm a good guy. But Jesus looks at him and he says, sell all of your possessions. Sell all of your possessions. What does this do to this young man? Put yourself in that position, okay? You've worked so hard. Maybe you grew up in a wealthy family, but there's an element of, okay, I worked hard. I earned this, and now I have power, and I, now I have wealth, and Jesus is telling me, no, in fact, Isaac, you haven't reached the good life, and you're not just perfect just the way you are. In fact, I want you to give away all this stuff 
that is giving you counterfeit identity, counterfeit security, counterfeit comfort, in re- because it's all replacing me. It's all your, you, you find it easy to, to adhere to the other commandments. Uh, you find it easy, oh, I can obey my parents, I can adhere to the Sabbath, I can do these other things, but this is something that pricks at your identity, at your comfort. And, and I think, wait, God, I, I thought you wanted more from me. This is my more. But Jesus says, you miss the point. He's teaching us we miss the point that this more is actually less. And what we conceive to be less of the stuff of the world is actually more of God. What I'm realizing is that there are many idols in my life. Idols of comparison, idols of wanting to be better than other people that are my peers, wanting to be ahead of them. Idols of pride, of not wanting to be behind. So where does that lead me? To discontentment. Oh, I need more. I need more of that. I need more power. I need more influence. I need more success. So when people look at me, they see me as somebody significant. So that people look at me, they love me and they approve of me and they think I'm awesome. That's feeding our ego. It's feeding our pride, feeding our self-righteousness. It's, it's giving us some sense of comfort but it's just a facade. We distract ourselves with, okay, what's next? What do I need to do? What, how do I need to grow? What do I need to achieve? What do I need to produce? Whatever. In, uh, because we, we're scared of healing. We're scared of confronting those things that are painful to us. We are okay with spending one minute a day with a hundred different people because those people never permeate the surface of, of who we are. I'm going to talk to this person and this person, this person. I'm going to watch this, these many TikToks or reels or YouTube shorts or whatever it looks like. And I'm okay with spending that much time with these folks because they never have enough time with me to really know me. Think about the time you've had with a good friend, a friend that really knows you. And you sit down for coffee and you're chatting about things of life. Maybe you open up, you're vulnerable in some way. Is that conversation not healing? It is. That healing takes work. That healing takes vulnerability. When I think about God, God is the perfect friend. He's the perfect friend. He's the perfect father. Why don't we want to spend time with him? Because we're scared of being vulnerable with him. We're scared of those things coming out that we know are issues in our life. We're scared of confessing and repenting of the things that we put off for so long. We're scared of, 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 of not using these coping mechanisms anymore because we've used them as shields to protect us, to protect our insecurities, to protect our sin, really. Today, I think God is calling us to give those things up, to realize that Jesus doesn't want more for us. In fact, he wants less of those things. He wants less of the things of this world for us because they're distractions. And he wants more of himself for us. Some will listen to this and say, Isaac, you know what? I don't agree. I don't agree because I think God wants more for me. I think God does have big things for me. I think God is going to use me in a powerful way. I think God actually is going to bless me in material ways. And if I, uh, you know, obey him. And I, I think that these things are true. And I would just say, friend, be careful that those things don't become your God. Be careful that those things don't become what you turn to for your comfort. Be careful that those things do not become your guiding force. Because in pursuit of more, we lose God. We lose God. If that more is not more of God, then we're chasing after something that's not him. It's not him. I believe that when you chase God, when you're in relationship with him, when you spend time with him, when you're being, when you're content with just enjoying God, then so many of those other things, those dreams that you have, those goals, the vision of, of how you want to serve him, those things fall into place because now you're not pursuing those things because of insecurity or fear or sin or pride, but rather you're pursuing God and God is saying, okay, now that you're secure, now that you are humble, I'm going to give these things to you, but don't forget me. Don't lose sight of me. And that is the healthiest, most mature, best place for spiritual growth and serving God is in that place. And that's what I want for you. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you were blessed by it. I hope you got something from it. Thanks to everyone on Patreon who supports what I do here. It's only because of your support that I can continue to make these videos and continue on this path of online ministry. So I thank you so much for that. And until next time, God bless.